check out this beautiful Peterbilt. I love this design right here. Love it. I love the colors. I love everything about this, man. That is a good looking Peter car right there. truck force one right there gonna go take a shower and I'm a long ways from the terminal so it's a little bit of a hike but it's really nice right now it's like in the 50s and uh, need a good walk so I'm gonna go take uh, gonna go take a shower and then head over to uh, outbound and see if I can get a load because over the past 24 hours, I've gotten my DOT inspection. Air leaks looked at, one fix, two still exist, but they're insignificant. Uh, I got a tire patch and rotated. I got a um, alignment. I got my APU PM done and a new belt on the APU and a chassis lube. So I've gotten quite a bit done. Here's all these, check out these hopper trailers. There's a bunch of these hopper trailers here in Springfield. These are little baby trailers. I don't know if you guys have seen these. For the uh, prime hopper division. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like about 10 of them here. Um, so anyway, in this video, I'm going to address, uh, oh, I got my truck wash too, which I know I could hook to a trailer and it drops the price down to $25. Um, I think it's like 45 or something without a trailer, but my truck was, when I got here, my truck was so, so bad, so disgusting that I didn't even want to take it into the shop or have any work done on it the way it looked. So... I had got that done first and it's not a good wash. I mean, it's not a great wash. It, there's going to be a lot of water spots and stuff like that. Look at all these tankers. It's not good rinse water, but in terms of like getting most of the bugs and the grime and stuff off your truck, it's, it's definitely a uh, very easy in and out, very convenient. For those who aren't familiar with the Prime Springfield Terminal uh, wash facilities, most most of you who drive, well, anyone who drives for Prime would be familiar. But that is, those are the wash facilities right there. Uh, but in this video, I want to talk to you guys about um, why, at almost six years of driving professionally, why do I still drive at Prime or pull for Prime. I don't work for Prime, but I'm contracted to pull freight for Prime. And uh, it's probably one of the most common comments. In fact, it may be the most common comment of, you know, what are you doing still driving for Prime? Why are you still driving for Prime? You, that's a starter company. You guys know all the stuff you see out there on the internet. Well, I see it on every, almost every single video. And it's usually by someone who somehow thinks they're making fun of me or something. Like, I'm not really sure what the point of that is because it doesn't bother me at all. I feel like it's, I don't know what, I don't know. Look, if you drive for Swift or any other company, good for you. If you can make it work for you, it's none of my business, man. It's I'm not going to sit here and tell you you're an idiot for the choice that you make. If it's working for you, good for you. But there's quite a few people out there that just don't like when someone is doing well pulling freight for a mega carrier. I don't 
I've never understood that. But there's no shortage of people who want to call you an idiot for doing something that is good for you. Maybe it's not good for them. Probably isn't. The driver's looking at me like I'm a weirdo. Walking around talking to my phone. Um, so, there's a really kind of, I don't know, in one one sense it's kind of it's kind of complex and in the other sense it's actually really basic and simple of my reasons for continue to drive pull freight for prime um, at almost six years in I, I'm only like a year and a half maybe a year and a quarter year and a half from being a million having a million safe miles and I've done it all with prime I got my CDL at prime I team drove with my wife at prime I built my private fleet with prime um, and now God willing I'll get my million safe miles with prime um, and just have literally no desire no intention uh, to go pull freight anywhere else none especially in this market. And that's kind of what I want to talk about uh, as we kind of get things moving. So let me bust out this shower real quick. And then I'm going to go over to outbound because I've slept today and I've got all my stuff done on my truck. So I'm going to go see if there's a load going out tonight. I'm ready to drive. Um, so let me bust out my shower. We'll get back into it. can't believe I'm doing this. I cannot believe I'm doing selfie in the mirror. <laughs> Hopefully this is the first and last time you guys will ever see me holding a phone in front of a mirror because I feel completely retarded doing this. But I just want to point out that I'm way ahead this year on um, my winter beard. Way ahead. Last year, it got to the length that I wanted it to when it got hot because I didn't start growing it until like uh, October. So I'm way, way ahead. My wife's going to be okay with it, but she wants it to be like pointy, not square. So it's going to take a lot of work, man. It takes a lot of work to see it's already this stuff over here. Like it's just a constant battle, man. A constant battle. When you, I don't grow a good beard. So when you don't already have it going on for you, you just, it's just a lot of work, y'all. <sighs> anyway. Hey, Prime Drivers, did y'all know that there's a beautiful balcony up here on the second uh, second level of Prime? Springfield, Millennium. Right where the showers and bunk rooms are. There's a door over here. Amazing view. Very beautiful tonight. Absolutely beautiful. I wish they had a nice, comfortable lounge chair. I'd just sit up here and chew on some nicotine for a bit. But um, this is this is a big part of it, you guys. I mean, there's we'll talk about the economic side of it here in a bit. But this right here, man, I don't know if you want to call it some nostalgia or. I don't know like so many of you I come from like such a vastly different professional background than trucking so to enter trucking with a company like prime at the time that I did which I think was like prime at its peak uh, was really special it was really special it felt special to me it felt special to my wife when she was teaming with me um, and I I have, you know, there's loyalty there. Not necessarily loyalty to the Prime today, because the Prime today is not the Prime that was here in 2018, 2019, 2020. It's, and a lot of, you know, I've heard drivers say, oh, well, you know, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, if you've only been driving for a year or two, then yeah, you won't know, because you did, this is all you know. But this is not the Prime that existed a few years ago not by not by a mod, I mean it's not it's night and day guys um, but I have loyalty to that prime 
that I came to and that had such a dramatic impact and change on my life and the life of my family at a time when we were just beaten down and bloodied, you know what I mean? And so a big part of it is loyalty. And just every time, even though I don't like to come to the terminals anymore, I can remember the time where these terminals were a place where drivers were just like, it was camaraderie and we all felt like we were rowing the boats in the same direction. And the, the cafe and everything downstairs was always just full of drivers, 24 seven, sitting around swapping I don't cares and being social and feeling that sense of belonging to something. And um, while we don't really have that at, at the prime of today, I still have that in me and my good friends. I've made some of the best friends of my life while driving for Prime, and um, they still have that, and we still have it. Even though the the company as a whole, the driver community as a whole, has lost a lot of that, a lot of us still have it. And so I know it's going to sound cheesy to some of you, but really, at the end of the day, man, there's some loyalty for it. There's some loyalty to it. And that's one of the big pieces. So we'll get to the other stuff here in a second. All right, so, and on top of, on top of the, uh, what I'm talking about on the loyalty side, it's also about network, you know, and maybe this isn't the case for all Prime drivers, but because I got on YouTube a year after being with Prime and because I teamed with my wife and built a private fleet with Prime, man, I have so many connections. Um, I'm on the phone with different Prime drivers every single night, every night. And sometimes I go to some of them for help and sometimes they come for me, to me for help. And it's just a pretty like outstanding network. Now, granted, over the last uh, probably year, I've begun to expand my network way outside of Prime. Like I've got just a lot of friends that uh, that don't drive for Prime and never have. A lot of them who never have in the trucking industry. Um, but it's still the case that the, the very core of my social network. Um, is in the prime circle and you know that's that's got incredible value and that's something that you get when you're attached to a company for that long when I say that long I mean five or six years is not really that that long but in the trucking industry being with a company for six years um, is a long time <laughs> Is a long time the turnover rates pretty damn atrocious for trucking so if you're with a company like prime or um you know any other big carrier with a lot of drivers and you do content like this like you build a very ex expansive extended network of people that you know um and can rely on and can call friends now in my case you'll have quite a few people who are going to stab you in the back and try to use you and abuse you and that just goes with the territory you know what i mean it's all part of the it's all part of it and that's it's unfortunate but it is what it is um but i think you know that sort of that loyalty and the the nostalgia is probably not a good word but i just like prime pulling freight for prime and being with prime through the thick and thin through the ups and downs and there's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs um just feels like home to me it just like there's a comfort level of it and i and i know there's going to be some pushback and say well you got to be uncomfortable you got to take risk you got to make big moves you got to grow up you got to put your pants on man whatever you know i'm also listening to a lot of people who did that kind of stuff that are absolutely falling on their face in this in this economy in this industry right now so take it man i don't care you <laughs> there's nothing any of you can say in my comments that haven't hasn't been said before and that uh is going to change my mindset on this you know i've been in it long enough i'm still i'm still new to the industry generally speaking but 
I've been in it long enough now that um, I know that where I'm at is 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 a good thing, and I know uh, that where I'm at is a good place to be in the broader scheme of trucking and freight. Um, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like this is not the time, man. In this economy, in this freight environment, it is not the time to take big risk and make big moves, especially big moves that that take capital. Um, and take time to set up and establish. Now's not the time for that. Now's the time to just hunker down, save as much money as you can, cut on costs in every way that you possibly can. Make sure that you've got a good freight network under your feet and a good network of people around you that you can go to for help or provide help for. And um, that's what I have in the prime family, man, I've got it. And I'm just not, I, I'm just not going to walk from that. Um, so that's, that's really kind of my closing thoughts on that. And then we got to move on to freight, freight rates and economy. All right. So speaking of, uh, freight and rates, of course, I just went into outbound and see if I could, uh, my PTA is like right now, so it's not like this is a big wait or anything, but I was going in there to try to sweet talk them to see if there's anything going out. And there are some loads going out. Uh, most of them are team loads, but uh, the two that I would, that he's like, man, I got these on the yard ready to go right now. They're both going to California. No, no, that's not, it's not my jam, especially with what they were paying. But even if they were, I mean, it'd have to be paying really good to uh, get me to go to California. Not my jam, man. Like I, I think I said earlier in this video, I haven't been uh, west of Denver for, pff, since I was training. So it's been a couple years, I think. Uh, but while I'm here, I just wanna point out, see, talking about nostalgia, that pad right there is where I got my CDL. That's where I trifected. Um, it was the worst pad too, because it was a very busy day and there were a bunch of people right here where I'm standing and then there were a bunch of people downstairs and they can all see that pad. So everybody's watching me test. Everybody's watching me test out. I feel like that's gotta be one of the worst pads to, tra to uh, test on. Not trying to put any pressure on you if you're in PSD or you have a permit and you're about to test out and you get that pad I will tell you you can trifecta on it as stressful as it is but it's pretty damn stressful <laughs> like it was I wanted to be back hiding somewhere out of view just let me focus on my test nah they stuck me right there in front of the crowds uh, so anyway it looks like I'm gonna get some rest tonight because I ain't going to California uh, in fact I wanted to just deadhead somewhere but he's like, man, it's a little too early. We got stuff coming in the morning. He said, uh, come over here in the morning. And if there's not something that you want to take, we'll just have you take a trailer up to, uh, you know, Illinois or something like that, or go pick up a trailer up there. That's what I'd, I'd be, I'd be game for that. Cause I can just get on up out of here and get into a really good reload area and call it a day. Um, but anyway, pretty quiet over there right now but that's going to bring us to the final segment of this video in why i stay a prime all right so in closing um you know talk about i want to talk about freight and rates now there's a lot to really complain about for sure um when it comes to freight and rates with prime and you know some of it is like i see i complain about it a lot on my channel and i see a lot of complaints about about this out on youtube but a lot of it gets directed towards prime and uh you know it's it's rare that i defend prime these days but i think it's probably a lot of it's really unjustified because uh you know, the economy is just really devastating 
right now. It, it, it's just absolutely devastating. I mean, you guys, we don't even really know like who's running the country. It's not Joe Biden, right? It's not like, uh, there's just, like it's just a freight train, you know, the economy's bad. And look, I'm, I've said that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, definitely not Kamala Harris uh, for the first time a few weeks ago on this channel. I'm very libertarian. I don't, I can't stand a Republican party or a Democrat party, but if you can look at this all objectively, like the economy is shit. It's way worse than they're, than they're uh, telling us all these charts and all these reports and all, it's all bullshit, you know, it's really bad. Uh, and the freight market is especially bad and there's just no end in sight. Like it, it, there's, there's no, earlier this year, a lot of the analysts and everyone were saying, okay, we, sh we expect next quarter to start to creep up and we expect, you know, we expect, we expect, we expect, and then it doesn't happen. Or you'll see a little bit of a bump and it's, you know, around holidays or seasonal or something like that. And then it's just right back to shit. Uh, for most of the trucking industry, especially for flatbed, um, and in a lot of cases, dry van, uh, it's, it's just complete and utter devastation right now. So trying to blame prime for freight and rates is really just kind of, it's kind of ridiculous because, you know, prime's in this just like every other company is. I mean, if you guys, Hirschbach is pension pennies, um, you know, all these companies are pension pennies and they're having to be very careful and they're trying to do everything they can to get whatever freight they can at whatever rates they can without pushing the customer out because the customer has all the power right now. The customer, if you push the customer too much right now, they can just say pound sand. We can, we can, I mean, we've, we have a couple customers that have tried to do that this year. Now, some of them have come crawling back begging because they've realized how much damage it can do to them to just throw our capacity into the gutter and, and act like we don't really matter that much. But really at the end of the day, it comes down to um, saving money for everybody. And that includes the customers, the shippers and the receivers. Uh, so, you know, some of the stuff I see directed at Prime, it's like, boy, you're just not really kind of in tune with reality because if Prime could get us better freight and better rates right now, I guarantee you they would. Uh, so it's not like someone's just sitting up there making a decision that, hey, we're just not gonna, we're not gonna pay this out very well. You know, like that's, that's just, it's just not, like that's not reality. Um, so, but the, one of the reasons, I've talked about this in my channel too uh, in the past, one of the, one of the key reasons I chose to come to Prime to begin with is that, uh, it's refrigerated freight. And not only is it refrigerated freight, Rob Lowe, uh, you know, was, was making relationships in the refrigerated market, like protein, meat. I mean, he started out hauling hogs. He was a hog farmer or something like that. Um, so these are long standing relationships that he has or that Prime has in the refrigerated business. And people always need food, no matter how bad the, the economy gets there always is gonna be a need for food, uh, drink, medications, things like that, things that we haul. Okay, so that's one. that was probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest reason that I chose Prime, uh, was because I felt like it had secure freight relationships and was somewhat insulated, not completely insulated, but somewhat insulated from economic downturns. And that has proven to be correct. Um, would I like it to be better? Yes. Is it Prime's fault that it's not? No. Um, but I will tell you that, that um, we're not in a better position than everybody in trucking, but we're in a better position than a lot. We're in a better position than probably 75% of the people I know who haul freight elsewhere. We are better positioned and we are making better money. Um, I know a lot of people right now who are just running break even. They're just running just to keep the, the truck payment going and just hoping something turns around. A lot of people that are doing that. And occasionally they, get, they may get three or $400 here or there. Um, I'll tell you that if you're not with Prime and you think that 
Uh, nobody at Prime makes money. You can still make good money right now. Um, not the best money, not better money than we've made in the past, but you still make you can still pay your bills. You can still survive in this market. Um, you know, our gross, our average gross revenues per truck for me are really about the same as they were a few years ago, which sucks. Um, cause you obviously want that to go up. Uh, but as I've said many times, and as all of you know, the cost of everything out there in the world has skyrocketed by 30% or higher. Well, Prime has no control over that. Um, so, you know, they've kind of, they've been able to protect and keep our rates and our, in our, uh, our volumes in a way that helps us to continue making money and paying the bills, barely sometimes, um, but we are when a lot of people aren't. And, um, you know, they can't, they don't have any control over the cost of everything. So it just kind of, it's just like, you know, the, I was having a conversation uh, when I was in the, uh, uh, in the bay for a alignment today. The gentleman, I don't know if he wants me to say his name. If you leave your name down in the comments, I'll try to give you a shout out in the next video. But um, he would he had an APU, he had a short in his wire to his fan in his, in his uh, APU, in the uh, AC unit, something, something. So anyway, we sat back there behind his tractor and talked the whole time that my truck was getting an alignment. And while we had a lot to complain about and we kind of shared some views on a lot of it, at the end of the day, both of it, he's a trainer and both of us were kind of like, yeah, but we're still making it, you know? We're still making it. We still go through struggles. We still go through hefty downs, really frustrating times. A lot of things we want to be pissed about with Prime. But at the end of the day, we're still making it when a lot of people out there aren't. So why would I jump from that? Why would I take a big risk and make a dramatic change for my trucks when my trucks are relatively managed? Um, we've got facilities and shops all, everywhere that can work on our stuff. We can get cheap tires. Well, not cheap, but certainly cheaper than at, at, you know, in other places. Um, we've got infrastructure and support with Prime. Um, you know, I, I have a new fleet manager. I don't really have a lot to say on that. I uh, <laughs> I don't have anything to complain about. I, I'll just put it that way. Um, well, let me say this about my fleet manager real quick. Since I open up that can, I just want to say this really quick. The reason that my fleet manager works out so well for me is that I, like, because I have a new fleet manager. I've had a new fleet manager for, oh, I don't know, six months maybe. We never talk. Um and that's great. <laughs> that's why it works out so well for me. Uh, it's just a big difference from my previous fleet manager who I was actually really good friends with. And, you know, we spoke often and we spoke even when he was at home, you know, so it's, it's a, but my fleet manager handles my fleet. He, he, um, he's kind of, you know, handled, like I go to him if I have problems, which is very rare. But because I drive almost exclusively at night, I'm usually, I talk with my night dispatchers and weekend di dispatchers way more than I talk with my fleet manager because I drive at night. Um, and my night dispatchers and weekend dispatchers that I currently have, man, they are on their shit. They, these are the best night and weekend dispatchers that, um, that I've ever, that I've had in my almost six years with Prime. And I've had some doozies. <laughs> I've had some doozies, man, where you just pretty much knew ain't nothing was going to be taken care of at nights and weekends, but that is not the case right now. The team on my, uh, that my fleet manager has on nights and weekends is outstanding, just remarkably outstanding. It's like, I have zero doubt that whatever my problems are, are going to be taken care of. And that's awesome. Um, my trucks are pretty much staying reloaded for the most part these days. Um, trailers for the most part are, are well maintained and, and up, you know, kept up and, um, and we're making it, we're, we're making it work. We're, we're surviving and the bills are getting paid again, sometimes barely, but, um, 
I can't say that for a lot of the industry and I can say that for Prime. Um, and it doesn't, I, like I don't care about all the posts out there on the internet and oh, Prime sucks and a lease is a scam and it, lease purchase is a scam. Look, I've, I've gone through lease purchases. I don't know what is, like I'm a happy customer, okay? A lot of things to complain about, but I'm a happy customer. So don't try to make those complaints at me because unlike you, a lot of you who make those complaints, I've actually done it. I've lived it. And I'm telling you, it's not a scam. It's a good deal. Uh, you know, all the stuff out there, you have to take with a grain of salt. I'm not telling you any of this for a referral. I don't put my referral code in my videos anymore. Uh, so I'm not, it's not just trying to get referrals. I'm just telling you this because I'm sharing my life with you. Um, I'm comfortable where I'm at. I, I, I feel some security where I'm at. I feel like we're making it, you know, not as well as we'd like to, but very few people can say that in this industry. And I do feel a sense of loyalty, man. And I know that's going to piss a lot of people off because they're going to be like F prime F mega corporations. Look, man, when Jen and I came into this industry, we were broke as shit and Never in our wildest dreams would we have imagined that we'd run a team truck doing mostly high value freight uh, in a way that allowed us to buy multiple trucks and really thrive the way that we did at peak with Prime. That was a remarkable opportunity to get us out of debt at the time and to get us on top of things. We had a baby during that time. <clears throat> it's just like, just a lot of possibility and opportunity happened because we decided to come pull freight for Prime. That's love or hate the mega carriers. And that's my reality. Um, so that's my story. I'm sticking with it. This video is pretty long. I apologize. So I'm going to go back there. Now I'm wired because I slept all day and it sounds like I'm going to have to wait all night for a load. Well, it's already 11 o'clock, so yeah, I might try to get some sleep here in a bit. But here's the thing. I like to drive at night. So I want to try to stay up at night and sleep during the day. But you never know how the load's going to work out. It's the name of the game. Be safe. Make good decisions. Always drive, thrive. Talk to y'all soon.